Bang it Brothers. It is now after the onion. And we're Bang, here. Bang we're Brothers free. featuring Freedom Fiends. <laughs> I always wanted to hear the Bang Brothers guys say like the name of my, you know, podcast. Art. Our podcast. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Way to go, uh, Bang Brothers guy. Freedom Fiends. Yeah. Yeah. So something I gotta get off my chest real quick is um I'm doing a blog Does post about this. Does it have to do with Bang Brothers? No. <laughs> it right. has to do with the the inordinate amount of emails and IMs I get every week of people saying, of newly minted voluntarists and anarchists saying, you're not doing it right. And they're usually basing it on like something they don't understand or they didn't click on a link of mine to see the explanation of it. They just go, eh. And this used to happen to me before I was into Liberty. Like I wrote these 500 page books on filmmaking and somebody would like, read a chapter of the book in borders, not buy the book, and then email me and say, so how do you make movies? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, read man. the book. Yeah. Yeah. And well, is there somebody specifically you want to talk about right now with this? Or do you want well, to just keep I want to it talk, vague? I want to, no, I want to talk about a specific thing. And I want to explain right. something because this comes up again and again and again. People bitching that we use Creative Commons license on all mm -hmm. our media. Um, mm -hmm. somebody was like, Hey, that's not, you know, some newly minted voluntarist is like, Hey, you're using a license. That's not really anarchist. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're like someone saying I'm not an anarchist cause I use the roads. You know, I'm using something, we're using something that works and exists in the given system. Here's the thing. He thought we were using creative commons without understanding it. He thought we were using it to, uh, keep people from being able to spread our stuff much and be able to sue them. It's no, completely no. the opposite. We use it to allow as many people as possible to use it in as many ways possible. And here's the thing. We use the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license, which is one out of like 18 or 27 possible Creative Commons combinations. And it's the one that allows uh, reuse, remixing, right. and includes commercial use. And the reason we do that is because if we just put, you know, no copyright, do what you want with it, or put anti-copyright, or put, uh, you know, whatever, like, anarchist thing we could make up that doesn't work through the legal system, that has no legal meaning, and no corporation who would ever, would ever touch it. No company right. even would ever touch it, you know? Right. It's like the Linux licenses and the GNU Linux licenses, like, they include commercial reuse, and that's why it's propagated so widely. Because corporations aren't scared of, you know, it being unknown to the person who put it out how it's going to, to be used. So Creative Commons explicitly states you can use this without fear of any repercussions. Yeah, the only, uh, the only, um, the only limitation is with ours is that you have to attribute us. Uh, and that includes, you know, using the whole thing or using a part of it in a remix or a new project and you have to attribute us, but not in a way that looks like we co-sign it. You know, you couldn't like, right. you couldn't uh, take the Guns and Weed movie and use it for an anti-Guns and Weed movie and call it <laughs> anti-Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom with Bill Smith and Michael Dean and Nima Vidati. You know, that would make it look like, <laughs> right, and that's right. clear yeah, in the license too. It actually retains moral rights, which is the... Um, so the guy who would be criticizing you here what, what what would you say if he was like well see there there it is right there it's not free you're you're instituting some type of ip there by saying because what are you going to do if somebody does do that and makes the anti-guns and weed film with bill black nima vidati and michael dean i'd say move out of your mother's basement and then tell me how the world works <laughs> no but, what would, okay what would now, now i'm asking you what would we what would we do um we'd probably make fun of them <laughs> okay, I we would definitely do that, regardless of any other actions taken. Uh, would that be the extent of it? You think? I think we would ask the person to 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 stop, to stop, and we would let our fans know that we endorse it in no way. And generally, when somebody throws shots at us, uh, you know, it's not uncommon that we have a bigger web presence than them. <laughs> and, Most and what of we the time. Say, well, and yeah. yeah, and what we say will be more widespread than the lies that they're telling. Yeah. And if it's not, like if ABC News did it, uh, you know, it'll get us attention. Although I would consider possible inc uh, instances where I would work within the legal system in ways that people would consider, eh, it's not moral, in extreme cases, uh, basically because there's not an alternative. You know, it's kind of like saying, 
Well, if you're a real anarchist, you don't you don't drive on the roads. You know, someone criticizing, saying if you mm-hmm. would take legal action for any injustices. Now, I heard this today. I heard listen to um, uh, Penn Sunday School. Penn Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller has a show. It's ah. on LRN and other places. Oh, it's cool. pretty good. Cool. He sounds that. exactly like Ernest Hancock. <laughs> you know, cool wise old guy. But I like Ernie better because actually Penn Gillette, while he is funny and I like his humor in his his show, um, he talked about like calling the FBI on somebody because someone tried to blackmail him. And that wasn't my biggest problem with it. It was that he said, you know, his lawyer said, well, the FBI is going to have your whole laptop when they get this back. And he's like, I don't care. I have nothing to hide. That's not Ugh. an answer to me. You know, is is he not a full on anarchist? I don't really, you know, listen to him too much. But is he sort of still in the minarchist land? Where I think he is. Cap- I mean, basically, he said someone tried to black, got a hold of his laptop you know, got it used or something and it still had his stuff on it. And there was a naked picture of him having sex with a woman on there. And, Gross. you know, he tried to blackmail. The guy tried to blackmail Penn for $100,000. Penn said his wife didn't care. He didn't care. It would probably help his career. But he felt sick to his stomach that someone tried to aggress on him like that, which mm-hmm. I get. Mm-hmm. But then he yeah. went to the FBI. I would just I would just make fun of the person, you know. Yeah, yeah, seriously. And yeah, go ahead, put my sex tape out there. Then I can have my own reality show. For real. Uh, yeah. And he said, you know. <laughs> I mean, who's, who's scared of a sex tape or, or sex pics these days? And who anymore? wants to look Nobody? at a sex tape of Penn Gillette, which he basically said. He's like, I'm a fat 50-year-old man. You really want to see me having sex? And, you know, his wife's <laughs> only comment was, am I in any of the pictures? Because he's in an open relationship. And his wife uh, said, am I uh, in any of the pictures? And she said, he said, yeah. And he, he, she said, do I look good? And he said, yeah. And he, she said, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, yeah which i'm actually just saw this uh headline i'm just looking at it for now it says woman who rode manatee arrested <laughs> is that in reference to pendulette sex tape no it's just something someone <laughs> sent me i don't know why that and they sent me a thing about a man being arrested in canada for <laughs> telling kids that santa isn't real oh wow, wow. good times good times uh, so yeah anyway the reason yeah. we use creative commons is to is to allow people to use our stuff and uh, not to keep people from it. So there, you right, newly minted right, voluntarists right. living in your mother's basement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes you do have to use the language of the state. Um, I mean, it's not. How is it aggressing on somebody? Is what I would ask the newly minted libertarian. How does that that in and of itself aggress against anybody? Because it doesn't. Uh, all it does is explicitly say, "Hey, use this however you like." We're stating this explicitly in in legalese as well, so that you can feel safe whenever you remix our art. Yeah, I mean. Well, the thing is that he didn't even know is that Creative Commons rides on the back of copyright law. It's it's less limitation within copyright law, varying degrees of it enumerated very well in each license. But right. the reason we use it is because it's a commonly accepted and understood license. I actually created something like Creative Commons before that with uh, my DIY or die burn this DVD uh, you know, my, my DVD of DIY or die, how to survive, survive as an independent artist. We put it out, um, without, you know, well, it's here's set- a real world example too, of, of how it works in real life. You'd be like, Oh, well, you're not being very practical. Well, whenever me, and Michael made, made guns and weed. And even when I was doing stories for the news, um, I would look for images. And if I saw that creative commons three, I knew immediately that it was fair game. So it was shorthand for right. me as, as I was going through picking out images to use. So, Oh, Hey, I don't have to worry about this. Right. If it didn't have, if it didn't have any information about its copyright, then I wouldn't use it because even if the, the creator of the content was like, hey, I'm cool with that. I don't know because he didn't tell me. Exactly. So moving right along, the name of this episode is Teaching the Slaves to Read. And <laughs> I really feel like that's what we're doing uh, with our media. Because in slavery, it was literally against the law in most southern states to yeah. teach a slave to read. And there were people who did it and broke the law to do it. Actually, some of them were Quakers. Quakers, I found out, were the first uh, organized abolitionists. And we'll talk mm-hmm. more about that after we sell some stuff. Definitely. It should be good times. I like it. Your microphone sounds good. Yours Delici- does too. Delicious I love your dish. Microphone, Delicious dish. Yeah. Delicious microphone. <laughs> Delicious Sounds Nima. Great. Delicious Nima. To your ear. <laughs> ah, yes. Delicious Michael. Is that what you wanted? Re- re- reciprocity? I don't know, man. It's getting a little too personal here. No. Yeah. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his cleverest. 
assistance Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty Quantum Vibe There's a robot girl and zany creatures Made with genetically engineered features And corporate villains crave the opportunity To steal a profit from others' ingenuity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty QuantumVibe.com You're listening to the Freedom Fiends Podcast. Freedom Fiends is now available for 24-7 streaming to your iPhone, Android phone, or other chromed robot turd. Click on the streaming audio link on freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. All right. Got it. FM. Bang yeah. Brothers. Hot new chicks on Freedom Fiends. We like that guy. We just think he sounds like the Bang Brothers announcer, which is a porn I think he video probably is series. the Bang Brothers announcer. He just doesn't credit himself as that on his wiki page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doesn't That's his, uh, his guilty pleasure. <laughs> maybe. Voice over for porn sites. Maybe maybe he just does it for free access, too. You know, we're kidding. He we're kidding. To pay the monthly fee. We're, we got to say we're kidding because we just did our last episode talking about, like, retention of moral rights, which is a legal term for, like, you know, not slandering people with their own media when you remix it. So, uh, you know, we're not going to commit fraud and say that this guy is the Bang Brothers guy. He's probably not. He just really sounds like it. And uh, well, we'll just make a disclaimer right now that. Uh, for every episode ever, nothing we say is true. Yes, it's all a joke. It's all a joke. But seriously, brains. seriously, teaching <laughs> the slaves to read was a crime in the South. And uh, some brave Quakers and Christians, Quakers as a whole, but Christian individual Christians did it and broke the law. And Quakers were the first uh, organized anti-slavery people. And unfortunately, a lot of the non-Quaker Christians who were into freeing the slaves were also into outlawing alcohol and later were the same people you know same type of people that same groups that mm-hmm. outlawed mm-hmm. alcohol they were nanny staters so it's weird that's, that's liberalism sad. right there it's like free the slaves but <laughs> make everyone else a soft slave yes yes slavery for all because it's equality right it's egalitarianism yeah. we should all have the equal amount of slavery well, that's why wyoming's the the equality state because they let women vote first, but then outlawed weed harder than anybody else. For everyone. Yeah. I don't know. I think weed's more uh, more outlawed in Texas in some places, actually. Um, I, would, I wouldn't say that, but I, I'm not sure. You know, maybe right. But I would say that Texas has a much more massive police state to enforce any and all laws it has on marijuana. Yeah, and, and, they, and they actually there's way more of, cops in Texas. There's kind of an unspoken rule with judges here of with really small amounts. I mean, with like, you know, under an ounce amounts. Uh, first yeah. offense, they send you to rehab or detox, you know, outpatient, de- like, which is sucks. It's like, who needs detox yeah. or rehab? But it's better, you know, in Texas, a lot of times they're like, boy, we own you. You're going to be breaking rocks. You know, they it's a good place to find. It's a good place to find hookups, too. I mean, if you want to find more weed jail detox <laughs> yeah. yeah or jail yeah yeah when you get out you'll have a much bigger rolodex of uh people to buy you from. so anyway um teaching the slaves to read i feel like that is what we're doing with our liberty media and the thing is like the slaves now don't know they're slaves mm-hmm. they don't know that mm-hmm. that they don't understand the barrel of a gun that enforces every law and every tax yep Yep. Well, when you first brought up the metaphor, you know, I thought it, it, it was great and I still think it is great. But yeah, you have that situation now. And I wondered, did you have that back in slavery days where slaves would refuse to learn how to read for fear of what would happen if probably fi- found probably. out that they could read? Yeah. I mean, some slaves were, you know, uppity, which was good. They wanted to leave. And then there were some that were uh, probably, hey, Massa, please don't beat me. And, you know, and, you know, and towed the line and also like... What were they going to do? You know, if you were in Alabama or Mississippi and you escaped, you had to get to Canada to live. I mean, think mm-hmm. about with no money and being black and instantly spottable as a slave, yeah. getting from Alabama on foot to Canada. Try that. Yeah. You, your chances yeah. of survival were far better 
with a master who didn't beat you too hard. So right. yeah, I'm sure that's, a lot that's of that's a really would. good point. Is you didn't uh, you weren't off scot free when you made it to the north. When you crossed that Mason Dixon line, you're not you're not out of the woods yet because there was the fugitive slave law. So yeah. Uh, it's yeah. a, a federal law forced people, compelled people to return you to your slave master if you were caught anywhere in the in the United States. Yep. So to extrapolate this metaphor further, we're not only teaching the slaves to read with our podcasts and movies. With all the blog posts that we and I do on like making better media, we're actually teaching the slaves to run a printing press, which is far more dangerous to the powers that be <laughs> than teaching the slaves simply to read. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that knowledge is available, you know, uh, for anybody. And, and you've noticed a lot more people uh, coming out with podcasts lately. Yeah, and, I did. A, I did uh, two interviews. I've done this is my fourth podcast in this four day weekend. You've been off eating turkey with family which is fine but you know the show must go on i did i a ate turkey twice <laughs> and then i went to work so i, okay. I didn't he worked. i was still yeah. in austin yeah so um you know i did our show on thursday on or uh, on thursday i did our show with chandler on friday yeah. i did an interview uh with this really cool new podcast dude called the freedom experiment this guy from chicago uh and on, and we talked a lot about making media better, you know, like sound issues as well as Liberty Saturday. And that's, I came up with the thing about setting the slaves free. It just popped out of my mouth when I was talking to him. He's a black guy from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right on, man. I mean, a black guy from Chicago who understands voluntarism and doesn't think, Oh, this black president's going to save us, you know? And mm -hmm. I'd just been watching hell on wheels a lot, which we're going to talk about. So I was all, and there's a thing in there where the rapper common plays this character in the 1800s, freed slave gun toting, gun toting free slave i haven't uh, seen him carrying his piece yet does he get his gun later on in the series i'm, yeah, I'm up to episode yeah. six and i and he does he you has love a it, knife huh? that he's oh yeah yeah, yeah. i love guns. it my wife loves it and it's uh it's rare that me and the wife uh will watch a drama together oh the railroad ar arms the negroes against the, the indians at one point ah reluctantly ah, but the common character reluctantly. is always like you know we don't have beef with no red man you know, no red which, man which is absolutely when i heard that line i was like he is paraphrasing muhammad ali muhammad ali in the in the vietnam no War. Viet yeah. Cong ever called me nigger yeah right, um right. anyway so there's a scene in there where it shows the character played by common as a kid uh and someone teaching him to read and i was like oh yeah i went and researched it and did you know that the song amazing grace Oh, and I also did a podcast yesterday on Ed and Ethan, which is great. And I took my segment of it and put it out as an Anarchy Gumbo show. It's just been a media nice. flurry. And uh, our Amazon affiliate links, we have sold six microphones in the past two weeks for six different people in three mixers. So we are the Johnny Apple seed of nice. uh, Johnny Apple crack of Liberty Media. Are they are they buying the Sure Beta SM58? They're buying your mic and my mic. They're buying the expensive uh, the, mic. The cheap mic, too. And okay. the cheap mic, yeah. Different okay. people. What about different the, the, what mixer are they buying? Uh, the update of mine, the one I linked. Oh, okay. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So common gets taught to read, and uh, we love this show. Talk about Hell on Wheels. It's rare that I turn you on to a show that your wife loves too, but she loves this, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an she AMC really show. Um, it's about it's Hell, on Hell on Wheels. Hell on Wheels. Which is right. tell what Hell on Wheels is. So, uh, Hell on Wheels, I'm guessing that's what they call the town. It's uh, the, the temporary tent-based town that, that sprouts up as they move along building the Transcontinental Railroad. The Continental uh, Railroad, yeah. It's the Union Pacific. I don't know how true it is to history. I don't know if it's, you know, trying well, to be true to history. Well, the railroad boss guy is based on a real person, but pretty much everyone else is fictional. it's not the real fictional. name. It is the okay. real name. Oh, I it is? I think it is, okay. yeah. Okay. But uh, most everyone else is, I mean, the, the main character, the cowboy dude, is kind of, he's really uh, Clint eastwood -y, but his own, he's made his own thing of it in some way. I usually hate Westerns, but I love this. It takes place in Nebraska. I think it's season three, they're going to move into Wyoming, uh, but right now it's in ah. Nebraska. They're moving along. It's based on a real thing. Hell on Wheels was the tent town that built up around wherever they were laying track on the Continental Railroad in the 1860s, you know, 50, 50s. Shortly after slaves were freed and a lot of slaves came out, a lot of uh, soldiers who fought on both sides of the Civil War came out and worked. And it was kind of this lib pair and it had the violence that people think would be in lib pair too, but it had a lot of free market stuff until the government squashed it all, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we'll have uh, yeah. plenty more of that coming up very soon so go ahead and uh, stay tuned the freedom fiends dude worms 
worms. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Yeah, yeah, it's some Freedom Fiends, ho. What it do? This is your boy, Nima V. Oh, we gotta say the date, too. It's uh, November 25th, 2012. Um, and I think we're gonna continue to talk about Hell on Wheels, which is an amazing series. Y'all should check it out. Um, I'm stealing time from the internet, so I'm making, uh, I'm making something for my blog post. Podcasts, you're doing it wrong. That's the image I'm making. Ah, so yeah. anyway, yeah, all right, the show, Hell and Wheels. You know, interesting thing about teaching slaves to read and freeing slaves, the song Amazing Grace, not many people know this, but it is about going from being in the slave trade to being against slavery. It was written by a guy who did that. He didn't just own slaves. He, like, helped steal them. He and sold, sold slaves. Yeah. John Newton, Christian slave trader who gave up slave trade, became an mm. abolitionist. It's ironic to me that they play the song Amazing Grace on bagpipes at cop funerals, like at all cop funerals, they play that song. <laughs> but then I was thinking about it's not ironic because the cop is dead, so he's giving up, you know, whipping the slaves. His hold, his hold on the slaves. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, I suppose he is. Um, wow. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen there, – there is a lot of themes of, you know, the freed slaves and how they're sort of making their way now. Um, and even though the work is pretty similar, uh, they don't get beat anymore, right? In the first scene – in one of the first scenes of the oh, first Oh, you're talking episode, about that show because they still get, they get beat now. They just get pepper sprayed now. But, okay, in the oh, movie – they do. In, in Hell on Wheels, the AMC show, which is amazing. And – Whole yeah, first season, real life. whole first season is for streaming on uh, Netflix, and you know you can get the second season somewhere if you want. Okay, go on. So talk about it. Okay. So anyway, um, you made me lose my train of thought, Michael. <laughs> so so um, yeah, I was gonna say they uh, the slaves they're not slaves anymore, um, and still they treated still treated like ass though. They are, but they have their own little freedoms, and they're making their way in the world, and they are. I guess they're more of a, a block. They're like a group of people. Um, they're sort of still ostracized by the whites. Uh, and the, the Irish, because they're the only people the Irish can look down on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the whores at first um, don't want to associate with them, but they really do, just secretly. Because they but don't then, want their white but, customers to know that they're laying But with, then uh, one of them Negroes. crosses the line and then opens it up. And, you know, that reminds me, I saw another movie this week, which was Ray, which is an amazing movie about Ray Charles starring... Uh, Jamie Foxx, who does a great job portraying Ray Charles. And Ray Charles helped uh, end segregation in America. And he didn't do it with laws or the government. He did it by boycotting shows he had booked in the South that were Jim Crow, you know, to where the blacks nice. had to be in one section and the whites were up in the balcony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, this one slave played by Common, you know, crosses the line and goes over and he's the first black to buy one of the horrors for a dollar for a few minutes and uh which is a lot of money in 1860 yeah 
Yeah. The other thing I really like about the show is uh, there's there's some nice anti-war themes that really parallel a lot of the rhetoric you see these days against, you know, quote unquote, terrorists in the Middle East uh, and savages. You know, we just did a uh, Muslim yeah. versus anti-Muslim debate where the guy calls Muslims savages. And they call uh, the in Indians show, savages in this. Yeah, the, the, the Indians are savages. And um, in the episode we just watched, there's this wonderful scene where um, the pastor, the preacher, the, the man of God is actually pro peace. Um, he's he's reading out of the Bible quotes about how you should put down your swords and turn them into plowshares and uh, no. put down your spears. Oh wait, you yeah. didn't get. I'm thinking of there's a later part where he quotes the line about um, sell your coat your coat to buy a sword, and then he starts arming Indians. You're not to that oh, part, really? yet, are you? Uh, yeah. No, no. Well, I was, I was amazed. Well, well, we'll go with where I'm at now. So, okay. Uh, I I was amazed that the the pastor was was suing for peace, trying to get people to be peaceful and not attack each other. He was he was bringing up like the Indians massacre uh, a bunch of innocent white people, uh, which is horrible, and the priest doesn't co-sign it. Um, but he does bring up to people who are really upset about this that hey, uh, two months ago. Their women and children were massacred by us at such and such battle, uh, saying, "Hey, history didn't begin when the Indians massacred us." Just it like has a lot of parallels saying, with the Middle East. History you know? didn't begin at nine eleven, uh, yeah. two thousand one. History didn't begin at nine eleven, two thousand twelve, in Benghazi. Um, you know that this is a string of violences, and, and we're no better than them. They're no better than us. We're just all being violent towards each other, and we should stop it. Uh, which I thought was really amazing. Also, the Indians are great because um, they come. They come to the village, right? And uh, it's hell on wheels. So it's like the worst of the worst. Um, it, there's like whores everywhere. And, but it's and lip dead, hair, man. It's stuff. lip hair. I don't know. There's if no they, I, law, I wouldn't call well, it lip hair yet. There's no law in that town. And it's, it's not as heinous as you'd think it is, as one would think it would be. And I really think that uh, what really needed to happen in that town was a little bit more killing. I mean, there are some people running around acting like the government, ganking people and forcing him at gunpoint into protection money you know yeah. one of the horrors should have just shot that irish bastard who did that i'm irish See, I, I, say I, that. I, I think for lib pair to really be lib pair the people who live there have to understand uh the non-aggression principle and have to understand that the state violates the non-aggression principle and that's why there's no law well if you and i've been uh, there if, you know we would have been living at the whorehouse but we also would have had our own preacher tent where we'd be podcasting we'd be next to the church right. standing on a soapbox <laughs> saying look the non-aggression principle brothers and sisters now give yes. me money for telling you about that, <laughs> like the preacher did. You know, we yeah, we we totally would we we totally would. It, it was lip pair to me in the sense that um, the state didn't have overwhelming power, uh, nor did any anybody have overwhelming power over anybody else. There was uh, de facto <laughs> egalitarianism. People are always saying you need the government because you need the government to equalize us all. I don't think that's true. I think if you have a government and it becomes powerful enough, then it is so much more powerful than. Any any other entity in society that there will never be equality but here uh, in hell on wheels where everybody the best they could get was their little revolver or their little lever action revival that revol revolver uh, right you you and I would have rented out the uh, magic lantern you know slideshow movie theater for we the day and put on our, our, our guns and weed Liberty yeah. theater yeah. Although guns but and weed were legal then. Opium in, was in the, legal In then. the first episode, the de facto state, you know, the Swede, he locks up uh, the main character, Mr. Bohannon, in a, in a rail car. He chains him to the board. Um, and the guy's able to get out. He escapes, you know. Uh, you can't yeah. really escape from, from a state, a modern state prison. That's not really a possibility. But uh, – Back in I the did. day, we were closer to Lipair because you could fight back. You had physical recourse because the state wasn't all all powerful as it is now. You know, I really, I mean, if I were transported back to that, I would be standing on a soapbox and renting out the Kino Theater for the slideshows to like do what we're doing. And really, like when I said, yeah. you know, I said a long time ago, whoever dies with their art on the most hard drives wins. And I've been quoted a lot on that. People really like that. I said that in my filmmaking <laughs> book in 2003 or four. Um, I have an addendum. It's whoever dies with their art on the most hard drives wins if that art promotes liberty. And ah, the reason I'm so into like, it to your favor with that. I am. Well, what? I'm perverting myself. I'm going to sue myself because the no, original was no, copyrighted. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying you're saying, uh, oh, well, only the media, the kind of media that I do now. It only matters. <laughs> that, that, that's the only thing that matters, man. And I really look at what? like I look at podcast episodes and like DVDs and torrent files. I look at them as like 
sacred things that like have so much power in a small mm. container kind of the way that like when i was younger i looked at a hit of lsd like you know <sighs> religiously giving it to someone or taking you know wanting it to like, be given to someone it'll saying open your mind yeah man. and it will like you know one one of our podcasts on an ipod full of pop music that's useless and disposable that one little fucking 80 megs of, of of truth can can blow someone's mind and change their life forever and we just keep getting emails and emails and emails and actually somebody's on the yeah. someone and his wife are on the fiends diet now and i want to know how that goes so we're spreading <laughs> pre spreading truth bombs man yeah yeah podcasts can do it but i think i think lots of stuff can do it and there can be liberty chunks buried inside other types of media we were talking about common in chicago and young black people and liberty um lupe fiasco has a new album out he's young black uh, and a rapper and he's from chicago and um he's he's got lines where he says he doesn't vote in his new album yeah uh, whereas common is, is an great. obama humper who went to the white house and bill mm -hmm. o'reilly criticized obama for having that obama humper at the white house because he did a poem that talked about the cop killer mumia and freedom Ugh, yeah screw that guy which was well, well uh, it was self to screw when lupe fiasco was screw on bill o'reilly when when lupe oh, yeah. fiasco that, yeah. that's what i mean screw o'reilly when lupe fiasco was there he was calling president obama a terrorist yeah and we'll, we'll have more on that when we come back so hell on wheels is like um last exit to brooklyn meets little house on the prairie or jericho meets red dead revolver I prefer the latter. <laughs> Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom beans and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom beans have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. All right, Freedom Fiends, we're back. You know, um, Nima, when I say that Hell on Wheels is like Little House on the Prairie meets Last Exit to Brooklyn, Last uh -huh. Exit to Brooklyn actually has characters that are shooting speed with tranny hookers in it. <laughs> in, the nice, nice. in the 50s. Okay. So it's, it's okay. apt. I see where you're getting at with that. Definitely, definitely. Um, it's irony, man. Little House the... on the Prairie, I mean, come on. But it is. It's set yeah. in the same kind of era and locations. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I definitely want to get to... Um, more discussion on whether or not we can describe what they had there as lib pair. Um, first, though, I want to continue on the Lupe thing since we are talking about Common and Chicago and rappers. But do you know uh, why Common is called? You know why Common is called Common? No, why that's I don't know name? why it's called Common. And this is actually uh -uh. a good example of someone getting sued and then turning like what you should do instead of suing back or complying um, the way they want you to. Uh, Common originally, the rapper went by the name Common Sense, which is a horrible name. Uh -huh. Horrible. Yeah. And Common's a yeah. really cool, weird name. And you, you like, you're like, what is it? Just as, instead of a common name or the white man name or, you know, the slave name or whatever, it's common name, you know, uh, uh -huh. it has all this mystery to it. Uh, he was Common Sense and there was a pre existing unknown, like, ska band with one record out in Orange County and they sued him. And uh, wanted though they wanted money. Wow! And he was like, "F that." Even though he was way bigger than them. Yeah, and he was like, "F yeah. that." He'd never heard of him. He's like, "F that." I'll just drop the cents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, there's a, a little cookie delivery place around Austin called it used to be called Tiffany's Treats, and Tiffany's, which is actually way bigger than them, you know, Tiffany's Jewelry, oh, jewelry Company them for it. Yeah, and so they had to switch it. Now they're Tiff's Treats. <laughs> Silly IP ridiculousness. Nobody would have ever confused the two. Well, I mean, Nikki Darling and Nick, Bling Bling are different. 
Nikki Darling makes jewelry out of clay and sells it and makes a bit of money doing it and comes up with really mm-hmm. cool designs and it's cool stuff and people like it. And some woman named Tiffany stole her ideas and is saying she's going to patent them, which is weird and hard and she probably can't do it but it's you know right. it's evil it's like you invented this i'm going to steal it and patent it so you can't use and it and patent it see that's the key because that's when the government steps in with it with its guns is when a patent is is granted yeah so you, people say oh well you without the government without ip you wouldn't have uh people who would have an incentive to create things because somebody would just create them as well well you don't have that with ip either because somebody just steals the idea and then goes and gets the patent first well or somebody said- gets a patent and holds onto it so it right. never gets created what i suggested to nikki darling was that she come up with a new item called tiff tiff turds and just make little earrings that were little um like turds made out of out of uh, clay <laughs> and originally i said tiffany turds but then i was like oh wait the tiffany company will sue you then so just call them tiff turds because the lady's name is tiffany so ah, ah okay okay yep just uh, make fun of people you know just, just make, make fun, fun of, of people. people that's how you do it yeah well, well, back to, to Lupe, and also I want to say this because uh, he talks about drones, and I love it when other rappers and people talk about drones. Uh, this is part of his verse uh, in verse 3 from Aital Aya off of his new album. Not really going to rap it, but I'll say it. He says, uh, I called the president a terrorist. Corporate sponsors were like, how the fuck you going to embarrass us? Ain't my fault. I was just repeating this professor emeritus from America, but my tone was like an Afghani kid without a home blew that bitch up with a drone, an Iraqi without no daddy, Palestinian throwing stuff stones so i really loved that line and i really love lupe what's the name of the record uh it's called food and liquor 2 the no, great the name, american what's rap the song album. what's the song it sounded like a uh, middle eastern song. name i tal i t a l is that reggae word is that a roster i word? think it is because he, yeah. he says i tell i uh, uh rap genius which is a site that decodes rap lyrics uh, <laughs> and is open source like uh wikipedia yeah, yeah i've seen it um it it says that uh, it's a food favored by Rastafarians, but um, in the comments, people also say ITAL is an acronym uh, for Information Technology and Advanced Learning. Uh, uh. So they, they, they posit that the, the song is about learning things by yourself outside of the, the mainstream media paradigm. I think Lupe is... Uh I, I don't know if he's an anarcho-capitalist or what, but uh, he is... I think so, he's a lefty anarchist, if yeah, anything. Yeah. I, I, Hey, I'll put my arms around those people, man, and you know, I'd I'd uh, I'd hold a liberty stick up for him. That's what DJ calls microphones now, liberty stick. Well, sticks. it's great because he's he's popular, he's big, just about you know a lot of people like him, and and he's one of he's probably the biggest mainstream rapper that will will call the president a terrorist. Yeah, that will say the president is killing little babies, little brown people, and little Africans with drones, uh, and say that he doesn't vote at all. Uh, not that uh, well, I pick the lesser of two evils or I would vote if somebody else. He all, he regularly says, I don't vote. He says that in this new album. He says, you know me, I don't vote. Uh, and in his last album, which actually had an anarchy A on the cover, wow. um, he says, that's why I ain't vote for him in the next one either. So he basically says, I've given up on the political system. You know, I'm all for reaching across the aisle to socialist anarchists. I really am. I mean, <laughs> as long as their plan isn't throw me in re-indoctrination camps at gunpoint and redistribute my mm-hmm. wealth when they if they get in power it's like we want the same thing in a way man you know why not give them a big reach around across the aisle and that's the only real aisle the aisle isn't democrat republican you know the only aisle i can see between is minarchist anarchist or lefty anarchist and anarcho-capitalist yeah yeah see i guess the caveat though has to be that the the great thing about libertarians or anarcho-capitalist is is the unified theory where we stick to our principles principle. and and apply them across the board so i would say we can we can shake hands with left or lefty anarchist all we want until they call for some kind of organized or unified uh aggression <laughs> institutionalized saw, aggression then we I, have to point it out to them as well i saw a meme today that was it said what all protester signs say and it was a protester with a sign that said i want the government to point guns at people i don't like and I was thinking about that is what all protest signs say pretty much, uh, or most of them. And I was thinking if you actually went to a protest with that sign, you'd probably get thrown in jail because they'd misunderstand <laughs> it. They'd be like, you want guns pointed at people. You say it. You're, inc- you're inciting violence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about back to the like, okay, understanding the, the non-aggression principle and spreading that as a meme and an understanding. 
uh you know i'm thinking in red dead revival or in hell on wheels the bible is a is a motif that comes up like people always like mm-hmm. well you know what it says in the bible and like the next guy knows even if he's a sinner you know it's like they all know the bible yeah. and that's a meme that like i think the importance of it was a universal uh like it brought it it made people together or like you know me because you know these words you know and i think mm-hmm. we need to get liberty to be a thing like that and uh right, yeah right. man well, well well pop culture has replaced that i think i mean that's the common language we all speak and that's uh, why i say is, like liberty wh- media the actual right. like file is the thing it's the hit of lsd to spread to the next person <laughs> Well, we the need talisman, to make Liberty Media more popular, right? If people sat around the water cooler talking about uh, the last Ben Stone podcast or the last Freedom Fiends <laughs> uh, and we're discussing, you know, well, I think the non-aggression principle definitely applies here or could you believe that that person aggressed against us? Uh, that kind of a thing. Instead I'd of, even, I'd uh, even like- <laughs> oh, I love Emmett Smith when he danced with that fat lady on Dancing with the or, Stars last you know, night. Like, back when I was working in offices, did you see what Rachel did on Friends last night? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. 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 I things, mean, I'd even love it. of no actual uh, intellectual I, consequence. I'd love but, it if the argument around only. the water. I'd love it if the wa- argument around the water coolers was. Well, I think the freedom fiends aren't really anarchists because they're using Creative Commons. No, I think you know <laughs> that would. I'd be happy. I would too. Then I, would I too. wouldn't have to be the only person having that argument over and over and over. And you know, I had. Right. I, I still go back to like. A lot of the time wasting crap people send me is based on them not clicking a little bit and doing some research. Today, I got a letter, and this is the people who like us, not the people who hate us. I got an email today from a guy who's like, I'm listening to you on this radio station in New Hampshire. You really should interview some people from New Hampshire. And I'm like, dude, I've interviewed like 10 of them on Anarchy Gumbo, you know? (laughs) And he was telling me about the Free State Project, like something I should know about. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. 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 Our movie showed well, at Porkfest. We're on LRN. You're listening to us on the radio in New Hampshire <laughs> because we know people in New Hampshire and our buddies with them and they respect us and we respect them. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not bitching at that guy. I'm just kind of like, come on, man. If you want to hear more quality media from us, click on some links and do a little research before you write to me and say, I read 10 pages of your book. How do you do what mm-hmm. the book says to do? You know? Right, right. Well, I mean, that's why you're so we're so detailed with show notes and uh, and we're detailed with tags in in blog posts and things like that. So yeah, you can if find you, it. if you're like if you're like, hey, I, I wish the Freedom Fiends would talk about this, or hey, I wish the Freedom Fiends would interview this person. Just Google Freedom Fiends and, and Free State Project, a Free State yeah. Project, or and, New and, Hampshire, and I guarantee yeah. you, you'll get some kind of blog post or an episode with show notes that says Free State Project or Eddie Free or whoever it is that you want us to. Talk talk to it, it it's a possibility that we've already done that um a probability uh, that we've already done that a probability fair enough yeah i mean this is episode 139 and then there's like 40 some episodes of anarchy gumbo there's our guns and weed movie there's my uh gun training done on aggression principle movie. we just churn stuff out and it's all high quality and we churn out mm-hmm. stuff on how to tell you how to make high quality stuff yeah so we're awesome so listen to our ads and do what they say <laughs> yes free market baby or we'll take uh, you to the uh, libertarian by the way, I'm, I'm done with the term free market i just want to use the term market from now on but uh, uh, we'll go into that more a little bit and i'll explain feral why. cats are free market cats says ed they're market cats have you swallowed too much of the state's poison the freedom fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at nagradio.com. That's nagradio.com. The Freedom Fiends from freedomfiends.com. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! 
Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati of the Freedom Fiends grease up their liberty... Ugh. Grease ah. up their... Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati grease up their liberty sticks and shove mad science in all your holes. That's how the show it, notes start today. It, it took a few strokes to get that one up, though. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm such short attention span. I was off doing 20 other things, and like, uh-huh. you're counting us in, like, seven seconds, six seconds, five. I'm like, yeah, I got it. I'm working on this Photoshop image, okay? But it's all for liberty. Yeah. I'm not... I'm, Still time for the fiends and I do liberty. So why do you say market instead of free market? It's all for liberty. Free market's redundant, man. It is. There are only two means of doing things. Uh, this is sort of my rough paraphrasing of Franz Oppenheimer, who's an old libertarian guy. Um, yeah. he, he basically says there, there. Okay, there are two ways of get of, of getting stuff, right? Two ways of acquiring sustenance. There is doing it uh, through work. You know, volunt- the voluntary means and doing it through robbery, which is, you know, petty theft or government theft or taxation. There's really only two things. You can boil it down. And that that's consistent with the non-aggression principle and the way libertarians uh, use the non-aggression principle across the board for cops, uh, you know, people in the military, tax collectors. It's all the same. Um, so, so really, there's Got the it. market means. And then there's the non-market means. Yeah, there's right. the market means and there's the government means. I think free market's redundant because I get no, it. you can't have market means if it's not free. I get it, and I'm I'm gonna let you do that. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll probably do it with you. Um, I'll let you do it. Uh, it's just also when you say free market, people roll their eyes and they think, yeah. oh yeah, this magical yeah. free market fairy well, will take the, care of everything. The thing but is, when you say market and then you explain what the market is, you're saying what what works, what will take care of everything, is not using violence is not well i think what you're talking about is the power of words and uh people corrupt them so then we have to change to something else that's the problem you know i mean when you've got mitt romney talking about i think i think free market is redundant as a concept as well yeah i get it and it's a grand statement and i co-sign it you know interesting weird non-free market or free market thing is somebody recently from the american embassy in ho chi minh city vietnam was downloading guns and weed the road to freedom on the torrents (laughs) <laughs> nice. I looked up the IP and it was like, wow, okay. Yes, and both of those things are market actions. He was downloading something and we want him to download it. He didn't point a gun at anybody. He didn't use the political means. Just market means, baby. Yeah, he was stealing time from the government to find liberty. So there. <laughs> or find, you know, maybe he thought it was a torture manual or something. Maybe that's the black site. Ah, maybe ah, that's why we have it, an embassy in Vietnam still. We, they. Uh, U.S. They do. They do. Yeah. Yeah. That that is their non-market means, man. So I got a couple quick things to run through, and I'm gonna give you the whole cast. Um, I feel like with all the tyranny that's going on, I feel like the state wants to weed out and eliminate anyone who has normal human impulses for freedom and self-preservation through death, jail, and fear. That's how they want to do it. I think the state has always wanted to do that. I think that's like their main modus operandi. I mean, Abraham Lincoln used to throw people in jail, not merely for speaking out against him, but for not defending his policy. So if somebody says, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln's a racist whoremonger, and you don't say, you bite your tongue, sir, I challenge you. Abraham Lincoln is a wonderful man. If you didn't defend Lincoln's honor, you could be thrown in jail. I mean, the state, the state at various points in time has always had this and has uh you know taken it to different degrees of extremity yeah and uh you know along the lines of updating words or using different words you know you're using market instead of free market ben ben stone and now us are using uh freedom mission instead of liberty freedom, mission yeah. liberty mission instead of liberty scene or liberty yeah. movement yeah uh, the liberty movement is over that's what you did in the morning when you first woke up i now took a liberty to movement about the mission yeah now I took it's a liberty time to get about the mission of the day makes me makes <laughs> gives me time and room to uh yeah so right. and i i still want to say last week we said let's try using the fr- phrase freedom fiend instead of libertarian or anarchist <laughs> and we ran it up the black flag pole and uh anarchists are responding people like that i've been hearing some good okay. feedback Okay. And uh, I think I think we should keep using it. I mean, it's not just a marketing ploy. It's like it's a valid word that's available to use. But uh, don't if if someone corrupts it and starts running for office as a freedom fiend, we're gonna we're <laughs> gonna send you a uh, cease and desist non lawyer letter and then make fun of you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although um, 
freedom can be vague for various types of liberals and statists. I heard this um, – uh, it was a debate oh, between duh. Molyneux and, and some other kind of status, but oh yeah, I know, duh. But uh, the guy was like, you know, when all these libertarian, the status guy was like, when all these libertarians call my show and are like, freedom, 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 I'm like, what does that mean? Because for me, I have more freedom to do things if the government pays for my health care. Because I don't have to worry about paying for my own health care. And then I have more money and freedom to do other things with that money. I have some really juicy gossip about Stefan Molyneux that really makes me kind of doubt him. Uh, and it's third hand, but two of those hands are people I really know and trust, so I have no reason to doubt them. Ben Quaker told me that Mark Edge told him that Stefan Molyneux told Mark Edge, I don't really believe that voting is rape. I don't really believe that line as hard-edged as I say it, but I've said it for so long that I can't backtrack on it now. Hmm. Was that supposed to be for public consumption, what you said just there? Probably not, and I'm probably we're probably gonna get kicked <laughs> off Free Talk Live for saying that. But uh, hey, we were just talking about uh, starting our own streaming server. We already have one, so you know, fire away. <laughs> no, man, we don't want to get kicked off. I just that's been in my pod notes for about a year and nine months. And I'm like, man, why not say that? Yeah, but um, despite, I don't think that that's a game changer for the good things Molyneux said. I think you can still take the work he's done. On wording things certain ways, and kind of like how we can still like ways. we can still like Jefferson quotes, even though he owned people. You could you could still <laughs> quote Jefferson, yeah, exactly. You could still like the work he did to phrase things certain ways, but detest him as a person for owning people and for being being bad when he was in office. You know, he he did horrible things when he was president as well. Whenever you have the power of the presidency, you, nobody's ever done, you know, good with that. So, um, but I think you can still take somebody's good work and appreciate that piece of good work as a piecemeal kind of thing, separate from, you know, the whole unified theory of their actual person. All right. So moving along, uh, there's a new category on our blog. It's uh, something like in their own words, which is basically when somebody writes a post, someone who's an anarchist writes a post speaking to the Republicans in their language or speaking to the minarchists in their language or the one I did recently speaking to the Democrats in their language, uh, uh, uh -huh. you know, in yeah. their own words. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's good. Um, I'm probably not the best person to do oh, those called, kinds of things. It's, it's just speaking their language. That's the blog category. So it's, uh, it's just what? Just speaking their language. Yeah, you know, yeah. I did a I did a blog post called like, "Hey Democrats, you used to be cool. What happened?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking yeah. about how when I was a kid, Democrats were largely and almost universally anti-war. Democrat voters, I mean, Democrat politicians. You know, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? That was directed at a Democrat in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Democrat voters were overwhelmingly anti-war in the '60s and '70s, and now they're like, "Yeah, Obama, kill them Muslims." You know? Yeah. And exactly, it's like exactly. Democrats. They're, used they're to like, be they're like, who in, who sent troops into Pakistan and killed Osama bin Laden? Without the complicity of the sovereign nation of Pakistan, our President Barack Obama. Yeah. And cheer in the streets uh i don't even yeah. want to use that one as an example i'd rather use the killing kids at a wedding party and killing pregnant women that's more cut and dry wrong i feel like i feel like know? they don't cheer that though i feel like instead what they do is they just pretend it doesn't exist they just stay willfully blind to it it's bloodlust too man though no. okay moving right along <laughs> got a few things to cover here and i'm gonna give you the rest of the cast man we talked about google chrome style cloud computing uh, last week and problems with it and advantages of it. Another problem I have with it that we didn't mention is that if the power grid or internet goes down, you can't get to your data. You know, I'm planning on like mm -hmm. when the power grid ends, I'm going to be, you know, watching movies and editing books on my computer using a generator. I don't need the internet for that, but you do if you store your stuff on Google. And it's also like the government could compel Google not only to release your data to them, but to cut you off from it. So you could write the great American Liberty novel and then not be able to finish it because they have it. It's kind of like, do you want to keep your guns at the sheriff's armory or in your home? Do you want to keep the gold right. buried in somewhere you know what it is? Or do you want to have a certificate that says someone has your gold in a safe somewhere? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. Uh, I think cloud computing is still good for other reasons. You know, we explained the two different types in the last cast. Obviously, the type where you increase your network resources is good. I also think it's useful for backing things up so you can access them anywhere if you're a traveling media person. You know, Michael, you pretty much just stay in your 
bunker all the time. No, but when I travel, I back my stuff up on my servers, not on their servers. Right, which is good, but not everybody has that. Uh, But we'll we'll come back with with and a USB drive up my butt that's encrypted. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Um, Yo. This is a call-in show, although we haven't given out the number. (laughs) We weren't gonna because we want to talk. Should I give it out, Michael? What do you think? No. No, all right. Uh, you had things you wanted to say about the new header on FreedomFiends.com. Yeah. Yeah. Go to FreedomFiends.com and look at it. It's uh, my cat Fuzzy with two microphones, one microphone actually, and my wrist with my spared tattoo holding the mic. It's my up. I got really sick of the one of you and me rapping that we've had for almost two years. Uh huh. Um, yeah. And I wanted something that, like, I wanted kind of an update. And like making fun of, there's this thing that everybody use, like 60% of podcasts use this image of like this old style RCA microphone in their logo. Oh yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Which Uh is like, you know, the Elvis mic. It's an old dynamic mic. It's like, actually there's nobody in their right mind would use for podcasting because they're not great mics for talking. And they're Uh, big and clunky and annoying. Yeah. And they're also like, that was the logo of RCA radio which oh, is like it? which is oh. general electric man you want to use yeah. general that's so square that's Hell not no. liberty um, i'm looking at you um sex lies and anarchy and i'm looking at you adam curry although adam curry uses it i think as a joke because his says in the morning next to it which is you know <laughs> which is their joke of being yeah. a fake morning show yeah yeah i think lou rockwell's podcast also uses that <laughs> same generic image of that mic yeah so i wanted to like actually use a mic we use and a cat. It was just so weird and cool. So I did that over the weekend and made a few yeah. other things. The squirrel images. The uh, ah, the, yes. the the fake ad for the new fake podcast, the squirrel cast with Ben Stone and Michael W. Dean, which was a picture of nice. two old men feeding squirrels. You know, I couldn't <laughs> find an old man with a beard. There are a lot of pictures of old men feeding squirrels, old white men uh particularly i think young people are amused by that and want to take pictures of it and put it on the internet but yes, i guess old yes. men who feed squirrels in my limited market research clean say cut clean <laughs> cut yeah why do old men shave i feel like all the awesomest <laughs> old men in fiction have giant grandiose beards you know like uh wizards in harry potter and that other lord of the rings thing because old like old men have, i don't know their names old man. men have a lot of time on their hands man you know Spending they don't, five, have, they don't five, have time to shave. Yeah. No, they yeah, they, they do have time. Old men have a lot of time to shave these days. You oh, know, they're on oh, disability right. or you know whatever. Right. Right. You know, they're they're not saving the universe or grooming the next person to save the universe. No, they're so they, they're, they have time to shave. They're whiling away time between visits with their grandchildren and death. And, All because you know, the government subsidizes their lack of doing anything through yeah. uh, forced retirement. I'm going to be doing Liberty Media on my deathbed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I read this great article. It might have been by Gary North or some some old libertarian stalwart uh, that was basically anti-retirement, uh, citing that, uh, you know, retire – the concept of it, first of all, is artificial because the government uh, – provides for it through distorting the market through things like social security um also uh it it sort of decays your mind quicker if you don't have yeah. something to keep you on your toes also it, it keeps you from really having a purpose for your life uh 
and I guess it's not for everybody. You know, that's the thing about freedom is people do what they want to do. And if they've allowed themselves to retire and do nothing, and that's what they desire to do, more power to them. Nobody but, uh, does nothing in retirement and lives. I mean, like, even if you're rich and don't have to do any work in your retirement, you go fishing, you learn to paint, you do something, you spend time or with you, your family. Or you're on, on the Rotary Club board or some kind yeah. of charity thing. Uh, yeah, my yeah. dad does all that, and he's 91 and still, you know, takes care of himself and lives alone. I mean, right, right. if he did nothing, nothing he would he would wilt you know he'd lose his li- yeah. will to live but you know See, I really what my generation is going to do when we get old we'll be in our uh rooms making hip-hop beats as old men getting, getting <laughs> pounding your t- on our mpc and I think, scratching I think, our records i think a uh, big industry in 20 or 30 years is going to be tattoo removal personally no man i i think by then old people tattoo won't rejuvenation because yeah that, that'll be yeah. it yeah because old people won't be square like they are now. it's like when bart is talking to his grandpa about the flying hellfish tautane and, and he's like bart look at this tattoo you know what this is and he's like wrinkly gibberish <laughs> <laughs> the tattoo on his arm from right, the war right. yeah 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 old tattoos look bad but yeah I don't, I don't think our old people will remove them i think they'll get them rejuved uh, yeah there's actually just- a reality show now of tattoo cover-ups Oh, really? Really? Of course there is. Mm. You know, and that's that, like, what is it with people's fascination of watching people work as entertainment? I really think TV's dead. Yeah. Man. No, I kind of like that. I think work it's a or good... Fight. I'd rather watch that than Jersey Shore where people just call each other horrible names. I'd rather watch people working and doing something well. Exactly. And it, it's really great that, that the market has expanded to glorifying people who are doing market activities. You know, it's, it used to be the only time you'd watch somebody work on a reality show. It'd be like true stories of the high red patrol or uh, tax eater A and B do awesome things and we should glorify well, them. I think that the beginning of that was the real world. They showed uh, that idiot Puck being a bike messenger. And I was a bike messenger oh, at the okay. time, so it was kind okay. of interesting to me, but... Okay. I still, yeah, I, guess so. I still say those people were living in a house they'd never be able to afford. That's that's the curly part of Lombard Street, most expensive uh, block yeah. in the city. No yeah, way. Yeah, when they did it in Austin, it was right downtown too. It was on like Second Street and Red River, and it was this giant warehouse that they converted with like all the finest, uh, new stylists uh, of decoration and gadgets. And it's like, no, dude, people twenty somethings in Austin don't live like that. No, <laughs> they they live in West Austin, uh, or not West Austin. They live they live on West Campus or Hyde Park, where they they pay way too much for apartments that look like they belong in the East Side ghetto. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but I like I like I like a reality show. I won't watch it because I'm not into that. But I like the fact that people will watch something like uh, what is it, Pawn Stars or, or I love whatever. That show. I, th- I, I I find it really boring, and I don't want to watch it. But I, I think it's cool that they make heroes out of people who who are just regular Joes running a business all all through market voluntary means. I know? really like hardcore Pawn too. I mean, I would rather watch Pawn Stars. It's interesting. And there's a lot more guns, but you ever seen Hardcore Pawn, the one that's on Eight Mile Row Road in Detroit? No, it's, no, it's, I've, seen, I've seen the one where they're in Vegas. I think that that the one in Vegas is Pawn Stars, right? Yeah, the one in Vegas is one. like people bringing in you know valuable antique weapons and really uh-huh. weird memorabilia and things made of you know chunks of gold. And there's a lot of history in it and a lot of intri- you know intrigue and uh, yeah. not a lot of drama. Uh, hardcore pawn is like, bitch! I lost my ticket, and you better give me my speakers back, or I'll knife you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I can see how that. Everybody would in there. Everybody in there. I can picture saying, "Obama gonna buy me a phone," <laughs> and then stabbing somebody. <laughs> and if you think nice. I'm being racist, go watch the show, man. It's what it is. It's it's how they paint it too, and how they edit it to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's entertaining. And, um, conflict is conflict is the essence of, essence drama. of drama. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're out of sync because of the delay. Okay, you talk I, about it, you get the rest of the show. You talk about oh, taxi I, I driving. Get, I get two minutes before the break. I will, we'll talk about it at the break. I hate starting a new topic and then being okay. like, "Oh, sorry." Well, okay. Got two sentences Eric out. Don and then we, we I can do this music. in two minutes. Eric Dondero, that <laughs> libertarian guy. Uh, he's not a libertarian. I know. I, I want people to he stop says calling him. He that. did a post that said he was so devastated by Romney's loss that after the election, he sent out a notice to family and friends, published on his website, saying he will cut them off completely if he learned. They voted for Obama. This is a guy who calls himself libertarian. He's like, Romney lost, so I'm going to cut off my... I already cut off my Obama friends and my Romney friends. 
Yeah. That's real well, libertarian. How about we cut off Eric Dondero from our lives? We keep forever. talking about him, though, man. It's kind of fun. <laughs> he might yeah, be, a, you know, he might be a COINTEL pro agent. He really might. He's so, he's doing he's so libertari- pro war. He's, he's doing so libertarianism pro-war. wrong. I think he's a COINTEL yeah. pro agent, possibly. Maybe, maybe. Trying to co-opt us and make us goons for the state. It won't yeah. happen, buddy. Keep trying, though. It's fun to make fun of you. Yeah. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! It's the taxi fiends. The taxi fiends. Yes. I'm going to talk about taxis for a little bit. I uh, sold the rest of the show to Nima. He gave me a, a, <laughs> an ounce of silver, and he gets the whole rest of the show. Hey, I didn't agree to that. I ain't giving you an ounce of silver. I'll send you an invoice, man. That's it's a voluntary the, exchange. A voluntary uh, invoice. No, no. That is that is political memes. That's not the market. What if that's how paid. taxes were, though? Like, okay, here's your bill, but you don't really have to pay it. You didn't agree. Yeah, I wish it was like that. I'd paper my wall with them. See, then it wouldn't be taxes. It would be a suggested donation, like when you go to a museum and they have a little box that says "suggested donation five dollars," yeah. uh, which we have I, on the Freedom I, I hate Fiends. That one. We have that on the Freedom Fiend site. Suggested donation. We don't tell you the amount. We but, do. Uh, you we know, do. PayPal. And, PayPal. And, and that's voluntary. I I was arguing with the statist the other day of of fr- pr- previous Freedom Freedom Fiends fame the the. The Facebook argument that got me all hot-headed. Um, he was like, you know, taxes aren't theft because people like roads and they like fire protection. And so we all chip in. <laughs> no, we oh do God. not all chip in. If you chipped <laughs> in because you liked something, that would be a donation. It would be voluntary. That's not the way taxes <clears throat> work. Um, but I digress because not only do taxes work through the political involuntary means, but also taxis. So you just add an I, an apostrophe, and an S, or just an I and an S, I guess, because they're not possessive. Uh, anyway, you say taxis, and those are also involuntary. Um, I, yeah, I mean, they have the word tax right in them. They do. They do. <laughs> so, so basically, uh, you, you talking know, I've to been, me? I'm the only one here. I am. I am. You oh, and I me? used to do my I used to do my, my hair in a mohawk, so I looked like uh, Robert De Niro from Taxi Driver. People would say back in the way, but way back in the day, uh, I was a lot thinner too then. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I've been um, you know driving pizzas around town for money uh, in you know the nights to make extra money and uh, feed myself. So you've been, and all the, that good you've stuff. been cruising the streets to make money. I have been yes, and um, for the sake of. Not incriminating myself, I will be vague here for plausible deniability, and I will say this, that uh, it has been known that some people can occasionally run across a group of people, usually girls who want to get drunk or girls that are already drunk, that will um, beg you or ask very nicely for you to give them a ride either to the party district downtown or from the party district downtown back to their sorority houses or whatever uh and they pay very well um you know five times uh often five times more than what would be considered a good tip on a pizza delivery uh so i'm thinking you know this is so much this this would be so much more money to do this you've got a friend of a friend who's done it I'm just, uh, I already made it vague enough. We don't even have to go that far. I made it vague enough. Um, So I'm thinking, wouldn't this be amazing to do this, right? To uh, give people rides for money. It's generally called taxiing or taxi service. Um, And I'm thinking, you know, and also I've been thinking about being an entrepreneur more and more. and, And I want to own my own means of production. And I want the wealth to come directly through me, not have middlemen at various points. I want the customer to pay me. And me to keep it, which is the part of delivering pizzas that I like. Is a the majority of the money I make is that it's somebody paying me directly, and I get to keep it all. Uh, I guess the government technically is supposed to tax most of it. Um, so I look into it, right? I'm thinking, okay, well, I could run it like my own business. Uh, I'll buy my own car. I'll get whatever government permit. I'm sure there is some kind of government permit. I'll get it. Uh, I'll I'll follow the regulations that are easy to follow, and I can follow them. Uh, 
and you know I'll own it. The money will go straight to me. Uh, it'll be gravy, right? Because I'll be making so much more money, and I'll get to keep so much more of it. Um, so I decided to look into it, you know, and eh, eh, it is so a no go, uh, ridiculously so. I had no idea uh, that taxiing was such a government run cartel um, in Austin, at least. I, I've I've heard tell uh, in other cities it's just as bad, but here in Austin, right? The government uh, will only give three cap three the three current cab companies permits. So in order to drive a taxi, you have to go through these three companies. There's no such thing as starting your own cab company. There's no such thing as, and as those being permits, your own man. Those permits sell for like I don't know about in Austin, but in San Francisco they're called medallions and they sell for like a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. They're right, worth as much right. as a liquor license. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's worse in San Francisco apparently, from what I've heard, in that um the government hasn't issued any new ones in years, so people are still it's like competing buying, buying a legal uh, full auto gun. Right, right, uh, and the price just is is insane there. Um, in Austin, it's a bit different, um, but also in Austin, right? Uh, because these three companies pretty much have, I guess it's not a monopoly, but it's a government triopoly because they're the only three companies that are allowed to do this business. Now, just think of how Soviet that is in itself, uh, that the three entities that drive the whole a whole industry in this geographic area are, are completely state sanctioned. Um, everything is regulated by the ground transportation Soviet, or they call it the ground transportation section of the transportation Divi division, which is a city agency. Uh, not only do they regulate who gets to drive cabs, what companies provide the cabs, um, but literal price fixing, literal price control. The price is set by the government. Uh, you can only you the, you can only petition the government for a change in the prices every three years. How unmarket is that? That is not market. That is the opposite of a market. Uh, uh, institution or a market transaction the price is set by the government using their guns that they enforce on anybody who tries to give customers a cheaper price that's that's not allowed or or give customers a higher price for better quality that's not allowed either the rates are literally set by the government and they can only be changed if you beg the bureaucrats every three years um, and you don't even get to all you get to do is make your case to the bureaucrats all you can do is is ask that the bureaucrats raise the price or lower the price, and then you can't ask it on an individual basis. The price is is the price that is it's only legal to charge that price for everybody in the city of Austin. Nobody can legally, uh, according to the government, charge a different price for taxi service. Um, so not square. Only that, but so square. You, you, you can't really even you can own your own cab, but because the government uh, regulates what companies are allowed to do cab service uh, even if you buy your own cab you still have to pay a weekly fee which is almost as expensive as renting the cab from the company so you can buy your own cab but you really don't save that much in overhead because you still got to pay almost three hundred dollars a week to the cab company and I don't know if it works like this in Austin but I had a roommate that was a cab driver in San Francisco uh, if you call in sick for more than like one night they still charge you for the use of the cab anyway and and rent it out to someone else Wow Wow. Yeah, man. Um, that is, is so square. And really more than anything, like when my wife found out about this, uh, she told me, you know, this upsets me more than any anything about the government I've learned so far because it literally crushed her dream. It crushed her and I's dream because we were like, well, we want to keep being independent. We want to move to being more and more independent and owning. Did the government make your wife first. cry? Just about, man. Just they about. They did once before, I remember. I don't remember what it was, but there was something the government did that made your wife cry. It, which is like, <sighs> how does that feel, man? Like, you know, if a guy made your wife cry, you'd probably put, punch him. But, you, you know, the government, that'd be like, it'd be like kicking a, a skyscraper. You know, you can't right. do anything well, except well, come on like, here and yell. Like with my story about the government forcing me to put a piece of plastic on my seatbelt, um, <laughs> there's nobody's ass to kick. They're, they're, the gun is pointed at me, but it's such a dispersed gun that there's nobody – I can't disarm <laughs> the government. I can't keep the gun from being pointed at me. I have to submit to its will uh, because it's like a hydra, and I, I just can't cut off one head. There's no ass to kick for me to kick in this situation. I just have to not do what we had hoped to do to make money, uh, find other ways of doing it that are um, – but really, you know – 
we picked this because it was something small we could start out. I really don't know. There, there is, to me, it seems there are so few options for honest work this day and age, uh, especially for honest entrepreneurship. I mean, I guess there's agorism and there's that whole movement, but can you really feed a family on that kind of stuff yet? I don't know. Um, but we'll have more, and we'll, we'll keep on this thread uh, after we try to sell some things with our ads here. At least that's honest work. So hopefully you can uh, support us with that. Go ahead and check this out. At least go on iTunes and review us. People haven't done that in a long time, and that really helps and doesn't cost you anything. There you go. Review The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo, please. Love The Fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon and IMDb. You can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site, or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiend's message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. So, yeah, I just had a little bit more of a tail end of the taxi story. Um, the, the day I did the research on on driving a cab in Austin, I was kind of like, well, you know, maybe I'll still look into it. And I kind of still maybe will. Maybe I will be able to make some more money at it. But uh, there's a guy who I used to deliver pizzas with way back in the day, you know, before my reporting days, like that old time I used to deliver pizzas, like back in college. And um, he apparently had gotten fired and started driving a taxi. And that also was what sparked my interest. One, one of the things that sparked my interest in looking into taxi cab driving. Uh, that same day, almost as if it was written into a script, uh, I was driving downtown. And I saw him, the guy who used to deliver pizzas and now drives taxis. Uh, his name's Chuck. I saw him that same day. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, how how coincidental but awesome uh so i had him roll down his window and we were chatting about it and uh i was like you know are you making more money than you did delivering pizzas and he was like no no money's worse but uh but at least it's less stress because he found i guess pizza delivery stressful um now maybe it's just because he's bad at it he's a marginal actor in the cab delivery world that or cab driving world that's a possibility but <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. If your if your overhead is seventeen hundred dollars a month just to the taxi cab company, um, it's hard. You have to have a lot of revenue, I guess, to overcome that and still profit. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe he's right. I I just feel like that overhead of paying to rent the taxi cab that seventeen hundred dollars a month uh is not a real market rate uh and we won't know what the real price would be i would imagine it would be much lower in a in a real market um as opposed to having a government triopoly uh enforced through the ground transportation administration of austin uh so that's my tale end to that is the government is literally keeping me from advancing and so for all you people who are like well the government makes us free. Uh, no, it binds our hands and puts roadblocks in our way, literally. Uh, there's a roadblock in my way here. So I guess I, I'd like to end it there and, and just say um, I, I'm not giving up. Obviously, I'm going to try to press on in my quest to find honest money-making work for myself or honest money-making business for myself and my family but that's the key i feel like i really want it to be honest that's why i left tv because i didn't feel like i was being honest being a tv reporter um and that's why i refuse to do other things that generally lead to more statism like going to law school you know Nima, there were two uh news anchors a man and a woman team in maine uh ah, yeah. on an affiliate who quit on the air recently 
and didn't go into a lot of detail. We're respectful about it, but then gave an interview to the local newspaper and said that it was over, you know, uh, journalistic differences with their producer, mm-hmm. which, you know, they may not be Liberty people, but it sounds like kind of the same reason you quit. Like they wouldn't let you go after real stories. Would you have any interest yeah. in interviewing one or both of them for the gumbo if I can set it up? You know. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I would I would definitely have a lot of interest, um, particularly in the young man uh, who's my age. Um, yeah, since we we sort of are from the same generation, so to speak, of of news people. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd definitely be interested in doing that for an anarchy gumbo. Um, I don't know how much he'll spill the beans uh, as to the real reason, but either way, at least we can share some stories and pick each other's brains about what it is uh, to be a young person trying to make it in the modern mainstream news media. Because what I found more than anything uh, is it's not it's not why you go into news media. When you get to that real newsroom and you see what you're covering and how – I guess more than anything, how you're covering it, which in my experience was sensationalizing things and glorifying the status quo and scaring soccer moms – um, I don't and think one of, any and young one person of them goes said, into it to do those things. One of them said that they were going to leave to go write a novel, and the other said they were going to go do independent media. So it sounds like you know they would maybe be interested in being on well, yeah. alternative we, media or we seeing can, how we, can we help do them it. Promote even. their yeah. own alternative yeah. media. Yeah, yeah. Although, uh, you know, you're never going to get a, a book published on a major publisher that really tells the truth about anything because they're all run by the same parent companies that run the news companies. So there. Yeah, but you don't need them anymore. I know. You um, don't. You I mean, don't. you can self-publish on Amazon and do your own thing. Um, unfortunately, like like with the taxi thing, it's harder. It's a lot harder to make a living doing honest work like that. Uh, the state distorts the market so much that uh, if you're if you're anti-status quo, it, it's hard to make a great buck at it. It's possible, and that's what we're working towards. But uh, it's a lot harder than if you were to be a shill for the state. Uh, if, you, if you're a shill for the state or a shill for the status quo, um, somebody who benefits from the state or benefits from the status quo and thus has lots of money will be willing to sponsor you at your effort to keep the status quo alive, which is unfortunate but obvious. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about the TSA's war on steampunk art. Do you know what steampunk art is, Nina? Yes, I, I kind of dig steampunk. Uh, from my experience, and I'm not well versed in it, it's to me what it looks like is art that imagines that technology progressed, but um, along a different timeline as it did now. You know, like I guess it assumes that uh, that we never really had gasoline or fossil fuels, but we kept. Or I guess there is fossil. Oh, that fuels we did. Steam, no, but, uh, yeah, it's more like you know, a common example would be putting like pressure gauges on the side of your laptop. You know, uh-huh, <laughs> like uh-huh. taking something that's like early diesel combustion engine technology era, like, you know, late 1800s and putting it on modern technology. And um, yeah. there's this guy named Jeffrey McGann who makes steampunk jewelry. And he made a watch that had like weird gears and like fuses or something on it. You know, it looked like it was a functional watch, but it looked really uh, pre current watch kind of art and Mm -hmm. he got Mm -hmm. stopped by the tsa and they you know searched him and took it and detained him and called him a terrorist and (laughs) uh and there's a big few for all over it a lot of people complaining and saying this is horrible and it is but something i did a little little research and want to point out i went to jeffrey mcgann's website which is linked from the article that i'm going to link about this uh and what he does for a living is he makes commercials and one of the five things he says he's made commercials for that he's really proud of on his website that he lists in his resume is he's made commercials for Partnership for a Drug-Free America, who are one of the most nanny oppressive and status organizations in America. So he does have Mm -hmm. some small part in the decline of liberties that are biting him in the ass. The war on drugs, the war on drugs fuels the war on everything else, including steampunk jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent point. Um, the concept of of giving this power to the state to control us is one and the same, whether they're controlling what you put into your body or the kind of art you wear to the airport 
for Christ's sakes. Um, and it's also important to point out, to tie it back to the last theme, uh, these TSA agents, they probably get great benefits. They probably make a pretty decent salary, um, more than they probably could find in an actual market. You know, They go sign up for the TSA on their pizza box, and they double their income, I would imagine, over minimum wage or whatever they could get work at. Um, these guys are using the state to do dishonest work and make everything horrible uh so uh, it's just it's so sad to me that that people still tolerate it i guess um because there are people that still tolerate this and when reporters interview people they always make it a point and you know their producer probably makes the reporter pull out at least one quote at least one sot or sound on tape that says well as as long as i feel safe I trust them to make me safe. And that's really the other thing that drives the problem is this horizontal enforcement, this idea that we need the state because we would be lost without it. Um, I would say, no, we are lost with the state. We are lost when you can't wear the art you want to wear to ride on an airplane because there's this organization called the TSA. Yeah. And I'll, I'll finish up here with saying that, um, the horizontal enforcement isn't just for the government. It's also for corporations that are in bed with the government and act like the government. A good example is Apple. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Steve Jobs made jail cool. It was the quote from Richard Stallman. And it's true. I mean, I, I can't count the number of times I've had this happen and recently had it happen where <clears throat> somebody who's religious about Apple products will say things to me like, well, sorry, I can't access your podcast because uh you know i can't use the flash player because apple doesn't support flash <laughs> it's like this technology you know i they're basically saying my product is better than every other product the one i choose but you know it can't use technology that powers 95 percent of the internet right so right yeah what's the point what is the point? And I get the point. The point is Apple thinks it'll increase its market share if, if people have to use Apple software. Um, and, and but if people don't adopt it, you know, they're st exactly. you're stuck in the jail. You're stuck in the exactly. Apple jail. Stuck in the Apple jail. And some people think it's cool because they got Stockholm syndrome. And uh, we're not like got, that. We're free of beans, got, baby. Or they got free stock in Apple syndrome. Uh, <laughs> nice. All right, and that's it for our show, folks. Keep listening. Take control.